I recently came across a list of questions from materialistic atheists. Since everything I know is either material or caused by material reactions, let's take a look at what they have to ask. If any of you want to play along, let me know how close your answers match mine. But since this is about materialism, I'm mandated to do this. Consider this assertion, nothing exists but those things with which science can experiment. Do you believe this because of scientific reasons, or is it dogma for you? You're assuming that I believe that assertion. You have it slightly backwards. We can only experiment on things that exist, or in other words, are part of the material world. <laughs> really? Scientifically speaking, if there's no evidence for something, there's no reason to assume its existence. There could always be things we don't know about, but it's foolish to try to claim they exist if it cannot be shown. Many materialists believe, with Steven Weinberg, that the more the universe seems comprehensible, the more it also seems pointless. Do you really believe that everything is pointless? In that case, why do you get up in the night when your child is ill? I believe there is no objective or imposed purpose on this world, only the purposes that we give to our own lives. One of my purposes is to be the best father I can, something I've not always lived up to. That purpose did not exist until I found out his mother was pregnant, and then I imposed it on myself. We give ourselves purpose for our lives. And yes, so while the world and possibly the universe will cease to exist someday, making all our grand plans and schemes pointless in the wrong run, here and now, we exist, and I choose to give purpose to this existence, despite its brevity. Science seems to have discovered many things about the universe and the world around us, but some materialist thinkers, like Stephen Hawking, say that objective reality is unknowable. Do you believe the scientific discoveries are real, or are they just mental constructs of man? In the second case, why does technology work? Scientific theories are the best possible explanations we can make for the evidence we have, but all of them could fall like a house of cards if new evidence is found that contradicts what we currently know. For example, we believe that mass curves space-time to create gravity, but it could be that gravity is actually caused by tiny goblins that grab everything and pull it down at 9.8 meters per second squared because they really like that number. We just haven't seen them yet. If goblins like this were ever discovered, then we'd have to adjust our theories to account for this new evidence. Technology works because our theories are probably right, or at least what is close enough to right to allow said technology to work. But there is always a chance that theories as to why technology works are wrong, and they work for a completely different reason. Hawking is basically saying we could be wrong about things. With rigorous testing to back up our theories, we probably aren't, but we can never be 100% certain. Science has discovered that nature is subject to surprisingly simple laws, if they are expressed in mathematical form. Materialist philosophers believe there is no need to find an explanation for the existence of these laws. They are just there with no reason. Do you agree with this assertion? Do you have scientific reasons to believe it, or do you believe it without reason? In other words, is it a dogma for you? Who is saying there is no attempt or desire to find an explanation for these laws? Scientists are searching into that. In my gravity theory above, yes, we know things on Earth fall at 9.8 meters per second squared. That doesn't mean that scientists just wipe their hands and say, well, that's it. We look for why it is. Why exactly that number? How exactly does mass affect the rate objects are drawn to each other? Curiosity is one of humanity's greatest attributes. Trying to find answers is what drives the scientific community. We don't just stop and say, there it is, but why is it like that? The evolution of living beings takes place through a combination of chance and necessity. Materialists say that this proves there cannot be a design in our evolution. In our experiments on artificial life, a branch of computer science that simulates the behavior of living beings within a program, we use a combination of chance and necessity parallel to that in biological evolution. It is evident that our experiments are designed. Knowing this, do you still affirm that biological evolution is not designed? Do you believe it for scientific reasons, or is it a dogma for you? Remember that the experiments are designed, that's true, but the end result is not. Because of the random nature of the artificial life experiments you brought up, we don't know where the experiment will go, only that it will probably fall within some parameters. The other difference is that we have evidence for a designer of these experiments, namely, other humans, something we have ample evidence for. We don't have any evidence for any kind of designer of the natural world, and there's no reason to assume one. Materialism affirms that we are not free, that we are programmed machines, that whenever we act or think, we have no option but to act or think as we actually act or think. Are you a materialist because you've meditated and found reasons for this position, or because you've been programmed to accept it? That's a simplistic explanation of the problem of free will. The choices I make are a result of the chemical interactions in my brain. As I get new information, the structure of my memory changes, so I have learned something new. When I make a decision that is also a chemical process, evaluating the knowledge that I have, it uses the memories I've created to evaluate and decide a course of action. I am ultimately bound by the chemical nature of my brain. So when I try to work out a position, I evaluate the data that I have and come to a conclusion. But how I work it out is determined by the laws of matter and the structure of my brain at the moment. In the same way a computer is bound by the laws of physics to process programs in a certain way, but can still take in variables to work out a solution, I am bound to the conclusions I can reach. Materialists assert that in nature there are only efficient causes, that there are no final causes or purposes. You are part of nature. How then can you have purposes? How can you set goals and work to achieve them? Or is that just an illusion? In that case, 
Why should we work to achieve anything if everything is decided beforehand? I don't even understand the question. Of course there are final purposes in nature. My cat brings me toys for the purpose of throwing them for her. It's not efficient or useful. She just likes it. It brings pleasure to her. She's able to plan ahead and achieve the ability to chase after a piece of milk top or foam dart by bringing it to me. I have goals as well, like keeping a roof over my family's head or finishing that stormtrooper armor that I've been trying to build. Because of the chemical nature of my brain, I will think of ways to achieve these goals and then work to achieve them. Is man just an animal as materialists say? If we analyze the matter carefully, we can see that the differences between man and the animals are overwhelming. Are you sure that man is just an animal? Why do you believe that? Is it a dogma for you? Or do you have reasons to believe it apart from having read about it? We are animals. Animals that evolved abilities other animals do not, like cutlery, but on a biological level, we are animals. The blog that you refer to lists many things that humans have done that other animals have not, specifically affect the environment in major ways. But that doesn't set us apart biologically, just that we're tool users, able to create tools that have a massive impact on the environment. That doesn't mean we're not animals, just ones that have adapted ways that have larger impact than others. Saying that we're not animals because we can do things other animals don't, we the same as saying the first flying animal was not an animal because it could fly, while others couldn't. It's still an animal, even if it could do things others could not do yet. To come to the conclusion that God does not exist, have you studied carefully the Christian idea of God? Or perhaps, following Richard Dawkins, do you think that, as God does not exist, you don't have to lose your time studying what other people say about him? In other words, is the inexistence of God a start point for you, a dogma? Yes, I have studied the Christian idea of God. I've taken classes on the major Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, as well as Eastern religions like Hinduism, Taoism, Buddhism, and Shintoism. I studied Wicca and Scientology. I find beliefs fascinating, so I have a basic idea of what the claims about gods are. But it doesn't matter. As an atheist, I don't simply say that God doesn't exist, but rather, there's no reason to believe one exists. There's been, so far, no evidence that a god exists, and it's up to the person making the positive theistic claim that a god or god exists who must provide evidence. This has not been done yet. One of the most important atheistic philosophers of the 20th century, Anthony Flew, 1923 to 2010, changed his mind in 2004 and published a book explaining the reasons for his decision. Have you read Flew's book, or will you take care not to read it so that your atheistic convictions won't be in danger? I haven't read his book directly, but I have read his reasons for his conversion. Basically, he came to the conclusion that things were too complex to be left to chance. His major concern was the origin of life from non-living matter, something we were still making progress in understanding. While you can find an example of an atheist who became a theist, a quick Wikipedia search can find dozens of examples of theists who stopped believing. It doesn't change the nature of the universe, it just shows that people can change their minds. Since you brought up Christianity in the last question, I figured you might want to note that Flew, even though he became somewhat of a deist, still rejected Christianity and described the claimed actions of the Abrahamic God as monstrous and despotic. Oh, and I'm not afraid of my convictions being in danger. I try to be intellectually honest, and if there's evidence that I'm wrong, I will have to be willing to change my worldview. So, there you go. Hopefully, I answered these questions to everyone's satisfaction. As always, if any of you out there come across something they think I should go over, or just have questions in general, send them off to me. Evita, you want to play us out? <laughs>